Good morning and welcome. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about my use of nicotine patches and how I've been dealing with long COVID and other viruses as well. So this spring, I noticed that most of my patients were literally crashing out. Their bodies were absolutely struggling, having a super hard time. And then I came down with the same issues. We all had an increase in POTS, which is that postural orthostatic tachycardia, like just turning over in bed would raise your heart rate. I started wearing my Fitbit again to prove to myself, like, what is going on with my body? I would, you can watch my resting heart rate go from like 70 to 130 just by turning over in bed. I have not been sleeping at all. Um, Brain fog has been horrible. That's why you got to catch me between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, if you're lucky, everything was just falling apart. And so many of my patients were experiencing the same thing. And I linked it always back to this issue that we all had multiple infections, especially viral infections over the winter. It's just one after the other after the other. And it was just getting harder and harder to recover from. So this was totally debilitating. I wasn't able to do the laundry. I, I mean, I tried to leave the house and leaving the house cost me my entire weekend. So when you see me on social media, on my personal page or on Instagram, you're like, but Allison, you went to the zoo. Allison, you did this with your kids. Al like, yeah. And then you didn't see me for five days because I was in bed with my heart rate high, dizzy as hell, super sick. And it was worth it to force myself to do those things, but the payoff the, the next week or so was just absolutely miserable. So I knew that I had to do something and that's where the issues come in because when we have autoimmunity, how do you support the immune system to get rid of the viruses? I was already doing things like monolaurin and lysine and VMG and omegas and vitamin D and all of the things and it just wasn't getting better. What do you do for a pro problem that is dysautonomia, which is what POTS is, where your heart rate's unstable, your blood pressure is unstable, stress is up and down, anxiety is up and down, and you know it's coming from within the nervous system. And I've already done all the work. As I continue to do it, right, I do breath work, I'm in therapy, I do EMDR, um, body work, yoga, somatics, vagus nerve work, use all of the extra tool, all of it, and nothing was getting to it. So how do we treat dysautonomia when we, we physically cannot even, it's not even helping anymore, right? So that's when my husband was bringing up nicotine patches because he was listening to it on a podcast. And I was like, I've never actually heard of that. It kind of rang a bell. I remember in 2020 people saying like smokers are more protected and there was a little bit about nicotine, but it never really came back up in my circles. And, you know, honestly, I like to think I'm on top of what's new or what's going on in functional medicine. But here's the thing. I think that functional medicine learns most of our techniques from research. Let's put that Phase four, absolutely. Research, number one, things that are evidence-based. And where we get into this, well, functional medicine is not evidence-based, is because we get to listen to our patients who are telling us, I feel better when I do this. Well, that's interesting. Why is that happening for you? Why does that work for you, but not other people? Why is this working for a lot of people? And we get to put that information forward and start pioneering that way. And that's why you don't see the research out there on nicotine. And when I did look for it, we we're only seeing things about people who are smoking cigarettes and vaping. And that's not really where the power of nicotine is. I think we can all agree that smoking cigarettes is not the same as taking probably pure nicotine, whether in patch or pill form, right? So that's where this confusion really comes in with the research of what's working and what's not working. And we have to go to the people who are having these experiences, i.e. me, i.e. maybe you. So I looked at the physicians who were talking about it, um, MDs, DOs, DCs, every, everybody who's in this world. And there's not many people, but there's enough that we can learn and honestly, patients as well, getting on the forums, looking at these things. So based off of the physician recommendations, I started with the seven milligram patch. So that's the lowest dose. Um, 
it's considered step three in case somebody asks. Um, I had to just tell them that at Walgreens when I went to go pick up a patch. They're like, we don't sell that. I'm like, yes, you do. It's step three. And then they were able to find it. So the thing that I did is I started with the seven milligram patches, which is the lowest dose. Um, I wear them for 24 hours because that's recommended usage for them and waited and saw. Um, the first two days, nothing really. That weekend, um, I knew I knew I could feel it coming. So that weekend, I Friday morning, I did the dishes, I did the laundry, I cleaned as much as I could, I saw my patients, and then by 12 o'clock, my butt was parked on the couch. And I played video games for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was exhausted. And I knew it was coming because the physicians who were talking about it are like, yes, it's kicking the virus off of your cells. And I'm going to talk about why this works here in a second. And you're going to have some type of flare, right? Because now the viruses that was locked in causing disruption is now free and is going to be roaming around and your immune system is going to go, ooh, what's that? And start getting rid of it. And that's the whole goal of this. This is the whole reason of using this. So I was so physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, no, no brain function whatsoever. Um, my heart rate was crazy. Um, I did have to start beta blockers because there was no support for that. There was no support for the POTS. There was no support for my heart rate that I could get under control. No amount of breath work. I mean, I could lay down and I, there was no functioning with it. So that was a, a really great key in this survival as well. By Monday, I was able to get some work done from like 9 to 12. And Tuesday was a little bit longer. Wednesday was a little bit longer. And so every day has gotten progressively a little bit better. And I'll tell you, I'm someone who reads a lot. I usually read 60 to 70 books a year. And this year, and really since my surgery last year, I think I've read like three or four. Um, everything I've done has had to be so curated with my energy because it's, it's so fatiguing. So it's been really, really difficult. Um, halfway through, or I guess really kind of at the end of week one, I did have a pretty significant colitis flare, which tells me that, yes, the virus is off and running. Yes, my immune system is like on fire. What are we going to do? We'll attack the rest of Elton's colon. Fantastic. That's resolved now. That's much better. But there was a lot, there was a lot of flare type issues going on. It wasn't as bad as having an actual infection. Um, I had that physical feeling of like when I had mono the first time in high school because it also works on, you know, all of these different types of spike protein, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr, HSVs, um, and COVID as well. So it happened and it's okay. I'm on the other side of it for the most part. Um, now I'm on week three. I'm not needing my beta blockers as often. Um, I can tell sometimes in the afternoon when that fatigue hits that it starts, my heart rate gets a little off um, and unmanageable and maybe I'll take one then. So that's pretty quick to be two, two-ish weeks in and be feeling much better as well. So my plan right now is to continue daily on, through two, another two weeks. So I'm going to do four weeks total daily and then start going every other day. And wean myself off of this. This isn't something I would consider for life either. Um, the biggest change that I have seen is I have not slept since my surgery June 27th last year. Um, nothing has helped. I have tried one or two medications. I've tried hormone medication. I've taken, you know me, I've taken all the supplements. I've used all of the essential oils. I've done all of the meditation, everything. And my doctors have absolutely refused to help me. Um, they have no option. They tell me that I just need to meditate and have better sleep hygiene. I'm like, that's not the problem. Something's really wrong here. So I've really been on my own and that's really, really been a struggle for me. So when I started using the nicotine patches, I was sleeping. Now I still had to get up for my dealing with my bag and things like that. But in the end, I was able to come back and go right back to sleep. So finally getting some sleep has drastically shifted <laughs> so much um, and has made my healing process go so much more smoothly as well. So, you know, I have my notes here. 
downsides of using nicotine patches, um, long-term use, and I would probably put that at months to years, is I'm not a smoker, so there wasn't this um, feeling of when I started using the patches of getting high or having that buzz or anything like that. So long-term use of the patches is going to downgrade those receptors. You're not going to be as sensitive to nicotine. It's not going to be as effective. Um, people can, are concerned that, you know, nicotine is so addictive. But like I said, with that, that addict, there is no addiction piece. I'm, patches right here today. Like, I'm not getting anything mentally or emotionally out of it or chemically other than not having horrible brain fog and debilitated muscle pain. So I've tried... Um, before the nicotine pills, there's Lucy pills, and they were four milligrams. And all it did was make me super shaky and nauseous and sick. And that quick burst of nicotine is not enough to deal with viral infections, in my opinion, because it's going to be that quick adrenaline high, whereas that patch is over 24 hours. So you're only getting seven milligrams over 24 hours instead of four, eight, 21 right away. It's a very, very different experience, um, which means I really don't feel anything. So I was hoping like, ooh, would it give me energy? Ooh, would it make me a little bit more alert? No, no. Um, and so what I'm going to probably do is recommend this for myself, probably my patients as well, if you're dealing with long COVID, long viral issues, is saying, okay, use this when you're having a reactivation, or you're actually in process with fighting a viral infection or dealing with long COVID, we're gonna figure out what's going to work for you for a time frame. Is it two weeks? Is it four weeks? Is it six weeks? How do we taper down? And then starting to think about next winter season, starting in December, are these patches something that you use on a daily basis through the winter season? So that way, when you do come across an infection, it's not linking on and staying in your body. So again when we're our as patients we have to experiment on ourselves we have to figure out what works for us why how long and it's very individualistic from a physician's point of view i want to experiment on myself before i ever recommend something so i guess that's what's a great thing about having long COVID and autoimmunity is i get to have that knowledge of hey i tried this and this and this here's my experience and i can help guide people with that as well so the theory behind nicotine and these viruses is that, say, this is your vagus nerve, okay? Their vagus nerve is controlling your autonomic system. So your breath rate, your heart rate, your sleep, your sympathetics, your fight or flight, your parasympathetics, your rest and digest manages that fawn or freeze aspect as well. It touches every system on the way down, your heart, your lungs, your digestion. So if you're dealing with constipation, IBS, and all of it, we're looking at the vagus. So let's use POTS for the example. Your vagus is controlling your heart rate and because it's lacking that control for whatever reason, that dis, D-Y-S, autonomia, so this autonomic system, dysautonomic, it's just not functioning correctly. So I stand up, my heart rate goes from 80 to 150. Um, I get really dizzy, I have to lay back down that's not okay. That's not cool, right? So this vagus nerve is having a problem. So what they're thinking, if this is a cell coming off the vagus nerve, right, that these viruses are coming into the cell receptors and blocking this ability of this vagus nerve to function. And it's increasing the POTS, the brain fog, the mental fatigue, the joint pain, the lung pain, the chronic asthma, all of these things. And our neurotransmitters can't come in to be like, hey, let's regulate, let's increase, let's decrease. Hey, she stood up, you don't have to freak out, right? So what they think, the theory is, is that the nicotine comes in and kicks this virus off. And that's why we're having these flares when we start using the patches. But one of two things is happening. The nicotine can help support these receptors on those cells of the autonomic system and really our entire body and so that way they can actually start to work and wake up or it's allowing our actual neurotransmitters like acetylcholine to come in and actually allow the cells to go oh that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to regulate where we can clear up this immune system we can regulate our digestion again and 
the virus is no longer messing with the system. So there's a lot of information on it. Um, the other thing that they're looking at is how the nicotine in the system affects inflammation because when we, these things are blocked by the virus, it increases inflammation in our brain and our nervous system. Um, I'm looking at my notes. Basically, the nicotine works on the system that regulates inflammation and nervous system response through acetylcholine and the nicotine, nicotinic acetylcholine, so it does have some of that, can play a crucial role in this process that helps with functions like blood pressure, breathing, cognition, including memory, motor coordination, autonomic functions, immune and vascular system regulation. Given that this low-dose nicotine has been shown to be neuroprotective in some cases, it's plausible that the patches could help with certain aspects of long COVID. Um, and also by binding to those receptors, it helps improve and support those functions as well. Now, of course, on the back end of this, right, so this is what my plan is as well, is coming off of the nicotine patches and allowing my body to do the work that it needs to do. One, I'm going to continue on um, the enzymes that do this work. So natokinase is one of them. Apex has a great product called Biofount CLR that has shown that those enzymes also help to remove the viruses. And I also need to build up my acetylcholine base and give my body the precursors to be able to make its own so that way it can start to function as well. And so that way, if you're doing all of this work with your nervous system, nutrition, immune, you're working on your neurotransmitters, you're getting in your B vitamins, your muscle groups, your magnesium, right? You're doing all the things and nothing's working is because those viruses are buried so deep into the cell and blocking all of its function that we have to find a way to get rid of it. So I've been really surprised, really happy. I'm so happy to be sleeping again. It's made such a huge difference. And I'm excited to keep using these for a little bit longer to see how my body responds, how long will it take. When we're dealing with these really chronic issues, it's it really is an experiment. And I know that's really frustrating to hear. It's frustrating for me to hear. I would love for somebody to come in and just be like, okay, you're gonna do X, Y, and Z for this long, and then you're gonna be cured and you're gonna feel better. But we need to give our bodies time, all of the support that we can. We still need to eat right, we need to move our bodies, we need to get sleep, we need to drink water, we need to have our electrolytes, we need to be aware of triggers and stress response, all of those things. But we also have a lot of keys that can help us move forward with this. So I'm here to answer any questions. Have you tried the nicotine patches and they're helpful for you? Did you not notice a difference? Um, come tell me what your experience has been, or is this something that you're interested in trying? I would love to hear it and be able to support you on your journey. So thanks for tuning in today. Let me know what your thoughts, questions, and I will see you soon.